All right, good morning. How's everybody doing? Some of you are doing good. Let's try that again. How are y'all doing? <laughs> all right, all right. If anybody does not know me, uh, my name is David Ayer. I'm the lead pastor here. That uh, pretty little redhead that had our announcements, uh, she is my girl. We are glad to have Gabrielle and Mariah back. The Lord brought the band back together. And uh, that, that's a reference to, like, the Beatles. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, anyway, we are glad to be here. It is a good day, and God is in the house. Um, I'm going to try to finish what I started last week. And uh, as you found out last week, there are no guarantees that that is going to get done. But I'm going to try. So... Anyway, anybody ready for what the Lord has for us? Yeah. It's good to see all y'all. And um, I'm just going to read Jeremiah 29, 11. Mariah is not in the room, but this is her favorite scripture. The Lord speaking to Jeremiah says this, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Amen. Anybody feeling that this morning? I, I could right now, if I just let myself go, I could totally just, um, if I just think about this long enough, think about this, for, the, for I know the thoughts I think towards you. I mean, isn't it incredible to know that in the world of seven plus billion people, he knows you? I mean, we all know John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we know that he loves the world. But then in Galatians 2.20, the Lord says this through Paul. He said that the Lord loved me and gave himself for me. It just, um, it's incredible, it's incredible to me that we're known, we're known, we're known, we're known by the king of glory. He knows you by name. Amen. So last week we were talking about who you are and, um, and what defines you. And we talked about how it is that, that so often in communities like Canton and Troy, this, this, uh, the Canton Troy Metro, um, <laughs> the Canton Troy Metro, with, with the expanse of, uh, of the population here, there's a lot of times if you're raised here, you are known here. And you're known here from some of y'all. Um, if, if, put it this way, if you, if I was raised in Canton, I don't think I'd be pastoring here. Because there's long memories of who we were. And um, I used to say a lot back when I was younger and uh, stuff that I would, I, if you knew my past, you'd, you'd wonder how I got the mic. Because the reality is that, that so, many, so many things happened in my life and so much I did and so many things I regretted. But this is the thing. No matter what my past looks like, I have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Scripture is clear that, that all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. When you came into Christ... Everything changed. You're not even who you were before you got saved. Literally, the, 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 the fact that you are adopted as a child of God. The, the fact that you are part of a new family. The fact that, that, 
That it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what your family line is. It doesn't matter what struggles have characterized the history of your family. You have stepped in to a new thing. You have walked into a new family. You are in a new location in the spirit. You're part of God's family right now. You are set free. You are healed. You are redeemed. There is nothing that can hold you back. You're a child of the king. Ha! I'm excited this morning. You see, God wants us to live this life as his children. And that requires for us to live past who we used to be. And that was basically the message last week. And I couldn't get out of it. That was where we lived. And that was basically my introduction. So here's part two. <laughs> See, the thing is, 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 this, is a, this is a key question. Because this, this year's theme is we have decided, and, and this message is entitled, we have decided to live the new life. You see, this, is, this church is called New Life, and, and it's a fitting name because the reality of, of this Christian experience is that, that it is a new life. It is a life past the things that used to hold us back. Do you remember who you used to be? Do you remember, do you remember what it was like to wake up on Sunday morning? Or for some of you, Sunday afternoon? Do you remember what it was like to be bound by things and, and have, have addictions and, and passions and, and strongholds be the things that, that defined your life? Do you remember that? See, but the thing is this, and, and, and you need to hear this very clearly. Who you are is not who you were. And what used to determine the limitations of your life are not your limitations anymore. There's a saying that is, I don't think it's, it's just in church, but it's certainly in church, that, that we want the next generation, we want the ceiling of our lives to be the floor of their lives. We want for our children to experience so much more in God that as high as I reach, that as much as I experience, all the things that God would do for me, I want that to be the beginning of where Colin and Gabby and Mariah and her husband someday walk. And when my grandchildren come, I want the, the ceiling of their experience to be the floor of what my grandbabies experience because this thing in God, we are always moving further and further away from what used to limit us. If you have been born again, you're a child of the king. The children of the king aren't beggars. Most of what we do here at New Life is about you discovering who you are. In just a few weeks, we've got Kingdom DNA coming up again. Ross is going to be uh, teaching that. If you have not been through Kingdom DNA, my strong suggestion would be to jump in. It is going to change your life. And then shortly after that, we have Encounter coming up. Anybody been wrecked by Encounter in the best way possible? <laughs> encounter will, will, will remove obstacles in your life that limit you from walking into what God has for you. Because the reality is this. So many things in our lives are predetermined by the programming that's in our heads from our past from our families, from our heritage. And that's regardless of who you are and where you come from. I've known folks that, that were, were, were not from wealthy backgrounds. They were, they were economically challenged, shall we say. That their perspectives were limited by what their past had, and it produced a life that was repeating the, the, the lives of those that had gone before them. And, and at the same time, on the other side of the spectrum, I've known people with lots of money that walk around with their noses in the air and have acted in ways because, because the reality is that, that both 
both situations you can come from either direction and it can produce strongholds that limit your life it doesn't matter which side of the wagon you fall off of if you fall off the wagon See, but this thing in Jesus, what's awesome about the church is that it is always level ground at the foot of the cross. I had to come, you had to come. Doesn't matter where we come from. My grandfather was a poor Mexican man living in Durango, Mexico, when an evangelist went through town and went to the center of town and preached the gospel. And that man, my grandfather, Miguel Soto, he put his faith in Jesus. He was poor. He didn't have anything, but he believed in God. And the Lord started to lead him. The Lord started to lead him and bless him. He brought him to the United States. He and his 11 children. Can somebody say, praise God? <laughs> somebody, asked my, somebody asked me once, said, said you had your mother had 11 you know in her family were were they farmers i said no they were mexican <laughs> but see god began to bless and today his 11 children some have gone on to be with the lord but we have two pastors that have come out of that group i am the third of this family that has gone into ministry and there's others who are coming there have been teachers and there have been um not quite attorneys, but mediators, legal mediators. There have been nurses. There have been all kinds of folks who have come out of this, this, this one man's faith. You see, your faith in God will change the destination of your family. We are rewriting histories right now. Things that, that should have limited you. Things that, that should define you. Those things cannot hold you when your, your Father in Heaven is the one where your faith is. Where that's the direction you're going. Where you are following and pursuing Him. The things that have held you back can't hold you any longer. We've got to see that God is always trying to bring you to new things. The answers of our problems is not the way that you used to answer them. The question is, how does God want you to do it now? What things does God have for you right now? Because as long as we continue to look through the old lens of who we used to be and how we used to handle things, we can never see the new possibilities that exist because you are no longer that person. You're a child of the king. We've got to begin to see that God desires for, for us to step into new things. That he has, he has a dream for us. He knows the things he's called us to. And he wants to bring us to them. God sees where you are and wants to take you forward into who you're supposed to be. See, the thing is, is that the reason that some of us struggle, the reason that some of us are still bound by some things from our past is because we haven't shifted our minds enough into the new life. Scripture says that our minds are being being renewed in his presence, in his spirit. And we need to begin to become aware and allow for God to do those things. Because sometimes the things that we're holding on to are the things that are keeping us bound. Too often... Too often, the reason that we struggle with X, Y, or Z problem or sin or whatever is because we have not allowed God to change our mind about it. There are times that the, the stronghold that, that brings a, a, a sin into your life goes all the way back to your childhood. There are some things 
that you might struggle with right now that go all the way back to, to diapers for you. And the reality is that, that you don't even maybe know who you'd be without that struggle. See, but we need to begin to understand that, that as long as those things, those things that define us so often are the things we've struggled with all our lives. Just, just lift your hands for a second. Just let the Lord talk to you. Father, where are our strongholds? Where are the things that define us that are not, Lord, how you define us? Let us begin to see, Lord Jesus, what it is that you want for us to see. In Jesus' name. See, if we begin to live out who we really are, everything will change. And, and it's not... A lot of times we want to focus this down to, you know, the thou shalt nots and the thou shalts. Like all the sins. Like, like, okay, so I can't, you know, do this and I can't do that and I can't do that either. And, and, then, and then I can do this. You know, that's why, that's why there's so many chubby Pentecostals because It got to where it, it gets to where it gets to where the list that you can't do seems so long, but I can still eat. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, so, and so we do. I told, I texted my brother the other day. I was I was eating something that I shouldn't, and um, he's the only one who would appreciate it the way he would. And I said, I'm beginning to see a pattern here. I said, I've been I've been a little kind of like emotionally um, drained the last few days, and, and I've, been, I've been eating these kinds of things. It was, it was peanut butter and fluff. Yes. Peanut butter, a fluffer nutter, holy cow. Okay, but for those of you who know, you know. Anyway. So, so I, was, I was having a fluffer nutter, and I said, it's a, good tri it's a good thing that I train really hard, or I would look like Jabba the Hutt. And if you don't know Star Wars, then you didn't get the joke. But anyway, <laughs> it's not here, guys. How we respond, what, we're, what I'm talking about is not just sin. Scripture says that we're to set aside every weight and sin that so easily besets us in the King James. That so easily, that takes us off course in modern language. There's, it's not just sin that will cause us to go off. It's weights. Sometimes it's, it's not so much that what you're doing is sinful, but that it is the product of a stronghold in your life. How do you respond to stress? Evidently, I respond by eating fluffernutters. <laughs> Confession. I just, I'm burying my soul before the 200 people of new life. Uh, but how do you, how do you, how do you respond to stress? I want you to think about it for a second. Do you fly off the handle? Do you yell and scream? Do things start flying across the room? How do you respond to stress? Because this is the thing. This is what I want you to begin to think. Is that the way Jesus would respond? Because he's the standard. He's, it's not about some kind of standard that we establish. It's not about you, you know, I come from a church where it used to be like, you had to be clean shaven. Half y'all would be going to hell. I mean, I don't even know. <laughs> I mean, that's just, that's, that's the standard. See, but this is a standard that was established by people who were trying to do right. They were trying to do right. But the thing is, it's not about trying to do right. It's, a try, it's about being right. 
It's about allowing for God to come and to rearrange the furniture in your living room of your heart so that you begin to reflect more of he of who he is instead of who you used to be. It's about how you live. How do you approach stress? How do you respond to problems? Next week, we're going to have a, a marriage thing. We've got XO Conference. It's going to be really cool. I do recommend you go. We are going to feed you as part of your, your um, registration fee. We're, we're feeding folks and everything. Um, we're going to have a cool thing on Sunday. And, and the thing that you're going to find from, from my wife and I and, and maybe some others is that, that as good as our marriages may be now, they weren't always there. Because the reality is that we had to overcome the strongholds of our past. We had never seen a good marriage. Her dad left when she was young. My dad left when I was young. We didn't know what it looked like to be married and to have a real good marriage. We had to look to Jesus. I had to ask the Lord when it came to parenting my children, when it came to loving my wife, I had to ask the Lord because I had no model. How would you do this? How would you love the Lord? How would you love my wife right now when she's being a big pain in my rear? <laughs> I can say that. I got the mic. And we, and we did drive separately, so I'm safe. <laughs> and my car is faster than hers. Anyway. See, the thing that we got to understand, guys, is that that's a really easy example because how many of y'all know that it's not always easy being married? <laughs> I saw you guys, you were like, <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about, honey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see... Because you put two people together, and the reality is some of you, praise God, have a wonderful heritage of, of family and stuff, and you don't know anything about what I'm talking about. But the thing is this, for those of us who come from broken homes, you, you don't even know what it looks like to have a good marriage. You don't even know what it looks like to take care of your wife. You don't even know, men, how it is that you're supposed to love your wife like Christ loved the church. But these are all things that God intends. These are the things that were created in Adam and Eve. These are the things that we're supposed to reflect. But it's strongholds that hold us back. We need to get tired of living within the boundaries established for us by other people's sin. Because those strongholds that are in your life are the products of hurt and of sin that have limited your perspective and caused you to see yourself and others as less than you are. See, God wants to bring you into who you are, not who you used to be. A friend of mine wrote a book. It was entitled, When I Stopped Remembering Tomorrow. Because when you cannot get past your strongholds, your tomorrow is just your yesterday on repeat. I'm going to say that again. Until you get past your strongholds, your tomorrow is just your yesterday on repeat. See, but God... But God, he knows the thoughts that he has for you. Thoughts of a, of a future. He desires for you to come to the place where you begin to allow for him to remove the obstacles so that you can have the life that he died to give you. Imagine this. Imagine that Jesus is hanging on the cross to, to, to forgive you of your sins, 
That you might come into the whole new birth experience and find out who he really is and what it is he really has for you. And, and, and so he gives you this, just for metaphoric say, he gives you this mansion to live in. And you get saved and you walk into the front door and you live in the foyer. You live in the lobby. You think the front closet's your bedroom. Because you have only explored the smallest of regions. But God, God has a whole life for you to explore. He has, he has regions and rooms in his, his provision for you that will bring you into things. You'll be like, wow, I didn't know this was here. I didn't know that this was available to me. Mm. See, that is why I'm passionate about the altar, just so you know. That's also why I'm passionate about encounter and stuff like that. Because the reality is, what we're doing is we're showing you, here's the room you get to live in, and you go, wow. God wants to bring you in. He wants to give you a tour of your house. He wants you to find what you've got for him, or in him. Man, this may, we may have to have part three of this message, I don't know. <laughs> see, this is the thing. Until you see yourself as new, you will have a hard time living the new life that Jesus has given you. Until you see yourself as new, you're going to have a hard time living the new life that he has for you. That is why, that is why we've got to start moving past the point that we see ourselves only as sinners saved by grace. Is anybody here a sinner saved by grace? Anybody? If you're saved, you are one. But I want you to hear me. Though that is true, you are someone who was a sinner and saved by grace. You are now a saint of the Almighty God. Scripture calls you a saint. You don't have to be canonized or any other thing by, the, by another church. God says... You're holy. God calls you his child. He calls you a saint of the most high. Do you know what saint just means? Saint just means sanctified one. Saint just means that you are one who's been separated. Literally, it means that you're one, you're one of his holy ones. And when you start to understand that you're a holy one, then suddenly a lot of the things that, that drag us down, that, that try to pull us back into to death and ugliness, those things are no longer attractive because you understand those things are not for me. I am holy. And it's not because of how good I am. It's because of how good he is. <laughs> Man, all right. There's things you got to begin to pursue in God. This altar is important because this is the place of prayer. This is the place where God begins to teach you new who you are. That's why I, I if I'm not playing the drums, and we got to pray some drummers in. Because I need that time. I need that time. Right here with my hands raised. And my heart lifted toward the Lord. It's not that I don't worship on the drums and, and I enjoy playing. But, but the thing is this. I need, I need to just worship him. Lord, it would just nothing to restrict me. Because this place is the place of engagement. This is where God will meet you. This is where God will change your life. This is where God is going to show you new things. And bring you into new dimensions. And it's not just in the altar, it's at your prayer life. It's at your prayer closet at home. You need to begin to understand that I've been saved, I've been filled with His Spirit, I've been baptized in His name, I am forgiven, and I am His. And because of that, He is mine, and He is here with me. There is nothing more refreshing to me than finding Him in my own prayer closet with nobody else around, because I know He just came because I was there. And there is nothing, there is nothing to me better than that. It's hard to pray when you don't know who you are. 
It's hard to reach for people when you don't know who you are. We worry about, oh, well, people have their own beliefs and I shouldn't try to influence them. But when you're in Jesus, you say, let me tell you about what I got. Some of you ladies know this. <laughs> Jamie Fitch, Jamie Fitch is, is, is my friend. I know that because she sends me like when, when the, uh, the place up in Blossburg is having a meat sale. She sends me that memo. <laughs> She's taking care of her, her pastor. Mm, means a lot, actually. Means a lot. <laughs> See, but, but when there's a sale going on, we'll let people know because we want them to have what's best for them. They, we want them to find the thing that we found. And when we realize, when we realize who we are and what we've got, we'll begin to share with others what we found in Jesus. You know, I, I know that many of you, uh, and he's not as high profile as he used to be, but Archie Roman's in the back row, and, and he's well known by many of you, and he used to be our sound man for many, many years, but, but he is a truck driver. And what I love about Archie is that he just spends his life just sowing seeds for Jesus. He just sowing seeds for Jesus. He's not preaching. He's not street corner preaching. He's not, you know, whatever. He is just constantly reaching. There's a chance. There's a chance. And hopefully we got to pray this in. Um, there's a chance that one of his friends who he's been witnessing to for about a year now might get baptized on the 19th here. See, but Archie has found out, Archie found out years ago what it is he had in Jesus, and he's just been sharing it ever since. But that can't happen if you see yourself through your old lens. We've got to see who we are. We've got to recognize what we got. We've got to realize what it is that we carry, that when we walk into the place, Jesus just walked in because he filled me up, and he's here to meet your needs, and he's here to touch you and take care of you. The third thing that's hard when you don't know who you are is it's hard to reach for your preferred future. It's hard to reach for your destiny. We go from being someone who says, I've been disappointed so often. I just don't believe it can be different than this. To understanding that God has a future for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, again, our, our lead verse, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. You see, it's time for us today. Band, if you want to begin to come. It's time for us today to put our past behind us and to press into what God has for us right now. Because God has, God has made his thoughts be toward you. He, he, wants, he wants to bring you into the things that he has for you. When my babies are away from me, and I know they're 24 and 21, and they're not quite babies anymore, my thoughts are always toward my little girls. They're always toward them. I'm praying for them. I'm wondering how they're doing. I'm, I'm wondering how they're feeling. I'm, I'm wondering, you know, how'd they wake up this morning? Did they, did they wake up with a song in their heart? I mean, my thoughts are always toward them because I dream things for them. I have a hope for them. I, I, I invested my life into them so that they can, they can see the future that God's got for them. And this is what I want you to know. As, as much as I love these little girls and as much as I have poured my soul into them, it is not even a fraction of what God has done for each of us. His thoughts are toward us. And he dreams of bringing you into the promises 
not just promises, but the destiny that he has for you, the preferred future that he created you to experience, that is what he wants for you. It's time to press into the spirit through prayer, yes. It's time to reach out to others who don't know Jesus and show them what we have in him, yes. But it's time. Those things can only happen if we decide to change our life right now. We need to change how we see ourselves. Because when you change how you see you to how God sees you, it will change everything. It's going to change your family forever. It's going to change everyone who touches your life and who your life touches in every environment you go into. And then it will change their lives and their families forever. My wife often talks about how when her mom was... was young married woman and she was going through a hard time she just lost her mother she's going through just just loneliness and sadness of missing her mom and and she found a bible that 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 had declared that her mother had received christ and asked him to be her lord and her savior and and that that planted a seed in in denise's mom's heart and and there was this little old lady that lived upstairs she wasn't some flaming evangelist. She was just a good old saint of God who loved Jesus, who knew who she was and knew who he was and knew how he had changed her life. And she just shared that with little Ellen Mack. And Ellen got baptized in Jesus' name, was filled with the Holy Ghost and raised her four children in a church not much different than this. Even the structure is actually the same. And today, those four kids have had tons of kids. And each of those four siblings serve Jesus and have ministered in different states. And Denise and I have ministered in different countries. And our, the, reach, the reach of this little old woman in the top of a duplex in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, has reached into Asia and Africa and Central America and South America because one little person saw themselves as Jesus saw them. Today, I want to just, I want to set you free. Right now, it's time to let go of the things that have happened. It's time to let go of the failures that you have done. It's time for you to let go of the things that have happened to you. It's time for you to allow for God to set you free from your past. Today is time to allow for all things to be made new. But most of all, importantly today, I want to come against disappointment. Because the thing, the Lord spoke this to me actually this morning. He said, the opposite of faith is not doubt. And he said, the greatest obstacle to faith is not doubt. The greatest obstacle to faith is disappointment. Because in disappointment, we learn to live within these little confines. Through our disappointments, we create the box 
that God cannot move past. And that box becomes the dwelling place of our lives until we decide to let go of our disappointments, to let go of their definition of who we are and what is available to us, and that we begin to understand that he is my father. And he has a future he's dreamed for, for me. And so today, if you are somebody who has been disappointed, through circumstances of your own creating, circumstances that maybe you were born into, or just circumstances of life that have led you down this road that is hard to believe God is good, cares about me, any of those things. If that is where you are, I want you to hear me. Jesus wants to break that junk off of you today. And so if that's you, I want you to lift your hands right now. If you have been disappointed and it has shaped how you think and how you feel, I want you just to lift your hands because we're going to pray in just a second. Tell you what, why don't you stand? I don't mean to, yeah, just stand up. If that's you, if that's you, lift your hands right now. And I want you just right now, give those things to the Lord. Say, Father, pray with me. Father, I give you my disappointments. I ask you to take them from me. And I forgive you. I forgive you for all my sad days. I forgive you for everything I thought you failed me in. I forgive you, Lord God, and I ask you to heal me right now. In Jesus' name, by the power of the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, come into this room. Sweep in here and touch your children. I break right now those strongholds across this room. For every person that has said that prayer, I break the strongholds of disappointment that have limited your view of who you are and who God is. I break those things now in Jesus' name and cast them into the abyss. I loose you. I loose you to be the child of the king that he created you to be. I loose you into the destiny that he shaped you for. I loose you into your created purpose in Jesus' name. Lord, bring definition to us. Your definition. In Jesus' name, Lord, we come right now. Heal in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you need prayer, if you want prayer, you don't have to need prayer. If you want prayer, come up. If you need healing, come up. If you want God to touch you today, come up. Because the Lord is in this house. God is here right now. And he is going to touch you. He is going to set you free. He is going to do things that maybe you've never had experienced in your life. But it is your time. This is your moment. It's time for you to enter into the dreams that God has for you. To enter into the future that he has and a hope that he has created you for. This is your moment. Choose, choose, choose to step in. In Jesus' name, amen.